Hello, BookTube. I went out the other morning um, with my muscular teenagers. We had a car, and we went on out on the highway and then went on adventures, and it was a ton of fun. And I even made a video, a little video about it, saying that, that it had happened and that I'd got the call and that we all had free time to spare and a beautiful day to do it in. Uh, but it only recently occurred to me that I never actually came back and made a video about what books I found. Because <laughs> in addition to everything else, I mean, we had a ton of fun. We, we talked and laughed. Uh, we, they, I'm here to help with them with social problems that they have, with, with school problems that are looming, with family problems, anything they want to talk about. Uh, I give honest but supportive and very detailed, very energetic feedback, which is, I think, all that any effective therapy is, <laughs> much less any friendship. So it was, it was a ton of fun to do. Uh, and also, it's it's a lot of fun to be in the company of uh, people who eat the way I do, <laughs> who have the same kind of appetite that I do. That's rare, and I like it. <laughs> uh, teenage boys are the only humans I've ever met who eat like dogs. <laughs> so, so, uh, but in addition to all that, in addition to everywhere else that we went and all the fun that we had, there were also books. There were, there were uh, charity shops and used bookstores along the way. Uh, and I got some books. I wanted to show them to you. <laughs> just so that, so that, <clears throat> that part of it wasn't lost. I didn't want my video announcing that I was going to be a taunt. <laughs> so the first thing I got is a little thing. It's a kid's thing from an old series of little hardcovers done by the Smithsonian Institute uh, that I love. It's a huge series. It's a whole shelf of books. And it's not made anymore. And of course, they're not in print anymore, I don't think. Uh, it's the, the Oceanic Collection in which every little book is a little vignette in the life of an ocean creature. Uh, and this one is Octopus's Den, uh, in which it, the, the, the basic story, uh, because these things are aimed at kids, the basic story is that an octopus finds a piece of glass on the ocean floor, is fascinated by it, takes it up and brings it back to its den where it will add the glass to its collection of trash and seashells and bits of coral and whatnot only to find that its den has been taken over by a larger octopus and that it needs to find a new home. Now, that's, that's basically it. That's the simple story. But it's amazing how much actual science these books get in to stories like that. It's just amazing. By the time you're done with this little story, you will know a lot about what it actually is like to be an octopus, which is fascinating and applies to adults as well as kids. I will... Uh, use this right away <laughs> i will use this i volunteer with a bunch of kids uh spending time with them listening to their problems <laughs> helping them with advice uh more therapy uh and i bring them books i bring them a pile of books every time i go and we spread them all out and they re-gift them to each other right away make sure that everything everybody has something and we will talk about octopuses they love talking about octopuses <laughs> uh then the next one a real find something that i, that I expect to see at the brattle not at some you know hinterland used bookstore in the middle of nowhere out on the route on on the highway uh but i had it years and years ago i love it and uh i was happy to find it again it's john quincy adams and the union uh by samuel flag bemis who uh won the pulitzer prize for the volume about john quincy adams before this one he did a, a volume what was it called uh john quincy adams uh, it was called john quincy adams and something to do with american foreign policy yeah, John Quincy Adams and the Foundations of American Foreign Policy won him the Pulitzer Prize. Uh, and this, that was about uh, John Quincy Adams' time as a diplomat, his, his work as a diplomat. This is about everything else, his presidency, his amazing post-presidency life, uh, and his, his death. And it's, it's a fantastic book, just fantastic, beautifully researched, be eloquently written. Uh, and I didn't expect ever to see it again in my life, much less outside of the Brattle Bookshop. And here it is. I had to reinforce it a little because it was it was in pretty rough shape by the time I got back here. And the next one is uh, is a novel. I think I've mentioned it on this channel before. It's my favorite novel by this particular author. Everybody has a favorite by P.D. James. Uh, and this one is mine, Original Sin. I found the the hardcover edition with the with the the deckled edges. It's a it's a uh, murder mystery set in a publishing house and. I think, I mean, she's a fantastic writer. You can't go wrong with P.T. James. But this one, I, for my money, it packs the most in between the two covers. Because we get, we get uh, ruminations on life. We get the huge swaths of personal story from all of the characters, major and minor. And it's just a, an all-around all embracing reading experience. I love it. I haven't, 
I haven't read it in a while. I haven't reread it in a while. So I was happy to see this, especially since all these things were, were dirt cheap. So it was a, uh... then I found an oddity. <laughs> it's, it's a kid's book called The Crows of Pear Blossom by Aldous Huxley, uh, in which a, a, a rattlesnake eats, keeps eating the eggs of a, of a crow couple. And so they decide <laughs> to take rather drastic action. And it works, and the aftermath, I swear, <laughs> it's, it's the aftermath is is macabre enough to do justice to a medieval children's tale, much less a modern day one. I, I was I was I'd never heard of the book before. And I was I was kind of amazed. <laughs> um, the next one uh is a book of Cape Cod houses. And this is uh let me see if I can it's it's got these washed pencil and pencil and uh drawings of just a, a, a few dozen famous Cape Cod houses, very old houses, and the a few dozen architectural details from a few more Cape Cod houses. The sort of thing that I just love. I know all of these houses. I know all of their history. I've been to most of the ones that are still standing. Uh, and I don't have this book, so <laughs> it, was, it was a no-brainer. Uh, the next one is... Uh, it, it not, it's another old kids book. I think I hit a vein of old kids books. Uh, and this one is uh, Peoples of the Past, The Romans. Uh, and it's just a, it's just a soup to nuts uh, book about what the Romans were like, all the different parts of their lives, what it's like to be at home, how a rich woman does her hair, how a poor person goes to the bakery, that that sort of thing. There's the construction of the army, the extent of the empire, and it's uh, I like the visuals. It's I, I've had a couple of other volumes in this series, but I don't have any of them now. And this will be another thing. I will bring it with me to the kids. I, it might not be quite their cup of tea, but they'll be interested in the Romans. I guarantee it. They'll be interested in this in this vast civilization of people that are so long ago. That just fascinates them. That's why dinosaurs fascinate them. And the, the other, and a couple more kids' books. <laughs> uh, this one, I I think I'm going to keep. I I will. I mean, I'll bring it with me when I go. And if if one of the kids actually really wants it, I'll give it to them. But. Uh, but I miss this. I had it once upon a time when it first came out. It's the complete tales of Beatrix Potter in an authorized big edition that has all the tales and all the illustrations. Uh, it's not split up. It's just one big volume. I had the big hardcover of this when it first came out, uh, which would have been in the 1990s. Yes? Do I remember that correctly? Uh, yeah, 1989. Uh I had the hardcover of this forever and ever, and then I got rid of it, and I think I know where. I think it went to a, a long time ago to this same group, this same uh, volunteer gig of kids. Not not the same group of kids, unfortunately. Uh, none of those kids are alive now. But uh, but I think I did the same thing, only without filming it. I think I think you know two or three decades ago, I got this book, fell in love with it said, oh, this is great, this is fantastic, I've always wanted all of Beatrix Potter, then as a guilty afterthought brought it with me to read a long day and gave it to somebody. And it probably just got thrown out with all of the effects, you know, a few months later. So I don't know. I don't know what its fate was, and I'm not sure I want to know. But I, I have I have this again now. I will uh, rejoice in rereading large chunks of this, and then I'll bring it in, and if somebody wants it, then I'll go through this whole process again. And in 30 years, we'll come back, and I'll make another video, and I'll say that I found it again. <laughs> and then another one is a very old kid's book. This is going to be a great hit. This is going to be a great hit when I read from it and bring it in and we talk about it. It's a big thing called Friendly Animals. Look at that. Look at this whole thing. <laughs> it's, uh... oh, God, I don't even know. It's by Carl Patterson Schmidt with illustrations by Percy Reeves, and it came out in 1947. There is the wolf and the dog. Uh, and I couldn't help but notice when I was slipping through here uh, that at one point we, we, you get, it's a history basically, a very, a very friendly written uh, children's history of all of the domesticated species. So pigs and cattle and horses and dogs and whatnot. And uh, when we get to dogs, a few breeds are pictured, and I couldn't help noticing a pointer right there that is my baby girl <laughs> right down to the huge black spot on the side and the long snaky tail that is my baby girl <laughs> uh, back when she could walk back when she could run back when she could notice the world around her now she creeps down the sidewalk and notices the ground right in front of her and after a few minutes even now in mid-September, after a few minutes, she's so chilly that she wants to come back inside. She just looks up at me, and I have to tell her 
either, okay, we'll hurry back inside, do you want me to carry you? Or, no, baby, you haven't gone yet. You have to, we have to stick around out here until you go, uh, until you go to the bathroom. And, uh, so a picture like that always gives me a little lump in my throat because for, for 15 years she could fly. She was an antelope. Never tired and no physical challenge was anything at all to her. And so, uh, But this sort of thing, these are the kind of animals that my kids know. So they will, they will very much want me to read from this, <laughs> and I'll be happy to do it. Uh, and then uh, those were used book places, just, you know, musty old used book places. But one of the other places that we went uh, was uh, Newbury Comics. We went, there's a comic book, those of you who aren't in America, there's a comic book and music <clears throat> college apparel type chain store called Newbury Comics. Uh, and they have, they have, in addition to comic books and the latest tchotchkes and and uh, all the latest music. They also have uh, the big ones do a graphic novel remainder section, where really marked down stuff. They just routinely have it, much like big uh, retail bookstores will often have a remainder section. Uh, so when my boys, of course, wanted to go in and and look around, so we did, and I went straight to that section, and I found. Two two ten dollar graphic novels that I had to get, <laughs> so so they're, they're brand new. They were still wrapped in plastic. Uh, the first one is this. It's uh, Superman: The World's Finest Comics. Uh, this is volume two is from sixty years ago, and on the cover he's juggling the seven wonders of the world, <laughs> and it's just a bunch of old dorky Superman adventures. But I love them. I absolutely love them. He doesn't have his full complement of superpowers yet. He's still funny. Uh, I just, I, I can't get enough of these old vintage editions of uh, my favorite DC characters. And even more so, <laughs> it sounds uh, disloyal to say it, even more so this other one. This is The, the Dark Knight, uh, Volume 5. This is Batman and Robin in the 1940s. All of the covers of the individual issues are urging you to buy war bonds and, and showing Batman and, and Robin, you know, riding air force jets into berlin or whatnot uh and it, it's just it's just those wonderful uh it's the same thing as the superman the, the wonderful wry very tough 1940s adventures no operatic overtures no psychological element uh very little in the way of anything uh supernatural or science fiction just batman and robin versus gangsters is what it mostly is uh, interspersed every once in a while with batman and robin versus a, a notably memorable villain like uh the Penguin, or the Catwoman, or the Joker. Uh, and I love them. I think they're fantastic. The the ethos of, of uh, two very enthusiastic crime fighters just leaping into the fray is perfectly captured on this little cover illustration. You can see bullet holes in the Batmobile's windshield. And Robin's doing the driving. It's just, that's, uh, I just loved it. And then uh, I got back here to Hyde Cottage when the whole day was over and there was one more book waiting. <laughs> it was a gift from one of you. <laughs> Paperback Junkie sent me this. This is a, a, Ven a guide to Venice. Uh, an old guide to Venice that uh, has a big fold-out map in the back. Uh, he, he knows perfectly well what I'm assuming you all know by now, which is that a, a good, strong Steve rule is don't send me a book. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> uh, but he, he took his chances that there have been 80 million guidebooks to Venice and that he kind of liked the look of this one and that maybe because there have been 80 million I might not have this one. And he was right. But don't let that encourage the rest of you. <laughs> if you want me to have an old guidebook to Venice or anything else if you really want me to have that, simply call the Brattle Bookshop here in Boston and uh, charge a $5 gift card over the phone. And that will be fine. <laughs> that will be that will set me well on my way. And the Brattle knows what to do. You don't have to give them many details. If you just say, I want to give a gift certificate to Steve, you don't even need to use a last name. They'll know what you mean, and they'll do it. They do it all the time. Uh, but I really appreciate it, because in this case, it was something that, I, that I'm interested in and that I didn't have. So thank you, Paperback Junkie. And thanks to my, uh, my boys, who will never watch this, of course, because it's thanks to them that I had a car and was able to cavort around. <laughs> uh, and, of course... Thanks to the rest of you for putting up with me. <laughs> so, so I'm going to uh, fix these books and catalog them, but I wanted to show them to you first. It, it, I felt terrible when I realized, oh my God, you never filmed that. <laughs> so I'll go for now, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, BookTube.